Hello and welcome to Homemade Mathematics. My name is Sierra and today I'm going to be showing you an introduction to integers. The topics we will be covering today are what integers are, why they're important, some examples of integers, how to compare integers, and then how to order integers on a number line. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, go ahead and keep watching. But before we can actually talk about integers, we need to talk about the other types of numbers that come before them. The first type of number you should have learned about is counting numbers, otherwise known as our natural numbers. So these are the numbers that you first learn when you're learning to count. That's why they're called counting numbers. All right, so these numbers, starting with one, two, three, four, five, and those are actually going to continue to go on in the positive direction forever. Past 100, past 1000, past 1 million, all the way up to positive infinity. After counting numbers, we have our whole numbers. All right, so whole numbers are all of our counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, so on, plus one extra number. So the way I like to remember this, if you eat the whole pie, how much of it do you have left? Zero. All right, so our whole numbers are all of those positive counting numbers plus zero. Now we're ready for integers. Because integers, just like how whole numbers included all the counting numbers, integers is gonna include all of our counting numbers, our whole numbers, and all of our opposite counting numbers. So what I mean by opposite, we have a positive one, we have a negative one. We have a positive two, we have a negative two, and so on. Just like those counting numbers are gonna go forever in the positive direction, your negative numbers are also gonna go on forever in the negative direction. So notice I don't have any decimals or fractions or anything like that in there. So your integers are all of your positive and negative whole numbers. Now that we know what integers are, you might be asking, eh, why do I really care? I think I'll just stick with my positive numbers. I'm good with my positive numbers. We don't need negatives. However, we use negative numbers, integers, very often in the real world. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and pause the video here and comment down below any real world examples you can think of that would involve integers, our positive and negative whole numbers. All right, hopefully you paused me and you commented down below. Now I'm gonna share with you three examples that I thought of and that I see the most often. The first example of where I see integers being used is temperature, especially if you live in the Midwest. All right, I live most of my life in Iowa and we definitely got down here, even way down here. All right, so temperature is one place that you will use integers, right? We have positive temperatures and negative temperatures. The second place um, is through elevation, all right? So like I said, I was from Iowa, which is a, a lower elevation, but above sea level. Um, and I now live in Colorado, which is a much higher elevation, um, but there's actually places like around the coast in California or Florida that are below sea level. So they would have a negative elevation. And then the third and probably the most important and most used is going to be money. For example, if you look at a bank account, let's say you make $500, so you deposit $500 in your account, that's going to be a positive 500. Where if you go and buy a video game and you spend $50, that's going to be a negative $50. So money and banking is definitely another place we use integers. Now that we know what they are and why they're important, let's take a look at how we can compare them. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out which symbol should go in here, greater than, less than, or equal to. If you aren't sure how to start these, just go ahead and continue watching and I will go over them with you. So our first one, we have a positive one and a negative three. Um, and how I knew that was positive is if there's not a symbol in front of it, we can go ahead and automatically assume it's positive. So if you like to put those positive plus signs in there, go ahead and do that. Um, but if we look at this on the number line, 
we're going to see that any positive number over here is going to be bigger than any negative number. So anytime you see comparing a positive and a negative, you always know the positive is going to be bigger. So I'm going to put 1 is greater than negative 3. And remember with those symbols, we have it open up to the larger number because Pac-Man wants to eat the most food. I have kind of an evil Pac-Man. He's got some teeth in there. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> All right, next one. We are comparing two negative numbers this time. This is where it can get a little trickier, right? If you have a positive and a negative, you always know the positive is going to be bigger. But what about when we have two negatives? With negatives, you really can think of it as the opposite of positives. Because like I said, all of these numbers over here are just a reflection or the opposite of all of these numbers over here. So if you think about positives and you know one's bigger than the other, you know with negatives, it's going to be the opposite of that. Because right? they're, they're opposites. So I know if I were looking at these as positives, that two would be bigger than one. But since they're negatives and they're the opposite, we know negative one is going to be bigger than negative two. All right. And if we're looking at our number line, we can see that negative one is further to the right, you know, closer to our bigger numbers than negative two. Negative two is closer to our smaller numbers. Okay. And then last one here is comparing with zero. So we should know if we have a positive number, that's going to be greater than zero. If we have a negative number, right? over here to the left of zero, we know that's going to be smaller than zero or less than zero. Now that we know how to compare, we should also be able to order because ordering is just comparing, but except instead of only two numbers, we're going to have five. So again, with this one, if you want to go ahead and pause and try it for yourself and then continue watching to see if you did it right, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can just keep watching and follow along with me. So this time I have five numbers. A positive 8, negative 3, negative 1, 4, and negative 7. If I'm wanting to order least to greatest, which sometimes they will ask greatest to least, so make sure you read those directions, but this case I'm doing least to greatest. So I want to find my smallest number, which as you can see, as we're getting smaller and smaller, I'm getting bigger numbers, all right? But they're smaller because they are negative, all right? So if I'm looking here, which one is my biggest number but a negative? All right, negative 7. So negative 7 is going to be my smallest, all right? And then if I'm looking at my last two negatives that are left here, which one of those is my smaller negative or my bigger number. All right, negative three. Negative three would come next. And then I have one negative number left. I'll go ahead and cross these out. I have one negative number left and two positives. And like we said earlier, our negative is always going to be smaller than any positive. So of course we have our negative one coming next. And then we should have lots of practice ordering our positive numbers. Um, so then we would have 4 and 8. All right, and now we have those ordered from least to greatest. If you would like a fun way to practice comparing integers rather than just doing a worksheet or flashcards or something like that, I have created a game based off of um, the card game War. I'll put a little card somewhere up here. Um, that you can go ahead and click on to see how you play that game and how you can practice your comparing um, with a fun game. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and comment that those down below and I would love to answer those for you. If you have any future requests for lessons, I am open to requests. I want to put out what you want to see, so please comment those down below as well. Also, I'm going to be trying to get more videos out there, so more than just the one a week on Monday. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.